Hello everyone, and welcome back to another video. Today I will be explaining all of the different equipment items in SCP Containment Breach. Namely, the Ballistic Vest, Hazmat Suit, Gas Mask, Night Vision Goggles, Radio, and SNAP, as well as their variants. First, let's go over the Gas Mask, which can be found in this back area of the storeroom, as well as in SCP-1123's containment chamber. Both of these locations can be found in the light containment zone. It can also spawn in a variant of the server farm in the entrance zone, although this isn't where you'll likely first get it, as it is important for traversing the heavy containment zone. The gas mask will keep you safe from gas filled rooms. This will mainly consist of the lock rooms in the light containment zone, as well as the many gas catwalks found in the heavy containment zone. Now, if the player enters a gas filled room without a gas mask, it will cause them to cough and blink extremely quickly, leaving them vulnerable to attacks from SCP-173. There are two variants of the gas mask that can be crafted in SCP-914. The first is the super gas mask, which is created by putting it through 914 on the fine setting. The super gas mask provides infinite stamina when worn, making it a very powerful item. Many people consider this a must-have item, and as you see in the bottom left, my stamina is only going down to a certain point, and then it just stops there. The second variation is the heavy gas mask, which can be made by combining the gas masks with an ingot of SCP-148 and SCP-914. If you want to know how to get SCP-148, check out my video on interacting with SCP-035 or my video on every single SCP item in the game. The heavy gas mask will provide immunity to SCP-012, SCP-895, and SCP-966's waves when worn. In my opinion, the super gas mask is still better as I consider infinite stamina way better than these perks, but if you want to make the heavy gas mask instead, the option is still there. The next item we will cover is the night vision goggles. The earliest point you can get it is in storage area 6, which can be found by taking the elevator in light containment. You will have to deal with SCP-939 down here, but other than that, they are pretty easy to obtain. You just need to go to this back tunnel right here. There are several locations in the heavy containment zone where they can be found. One of them is in SCP-895's containment chamber, which you will need a level 3 keycard to open. You can find it by going down the stairwell into the coughing room, however, I would not recommend this without SCP-1499 as going into the coffin room will spawn SCP-106. They can be found in SCP-966's containment chamber, although I recommend this even less, 
as going in here will permanently spawn two SCP-966 instances into your game that will be in the room with you when you get them. Finally, for the heavy containment zone, they can be found in the generator room down in the maintenance tunnels. However, this location is truly the worst of both worlds as SCP-106 will spawn right at the elevator entrance when you get down there if you haven't recontained him yet. And there will be two SCP-966 instances down here that will now be permanently spawned into your game. Lastly, you can get them from the server hub in the entrance zone, which will require a level 3 keycard to enter. This is definitely the safest location where you can get them, but it's also the latest point in the game where you can get them. The night vision goggles will let you see farther and will let you see in the dark. Crazy, I know. This is very useful in the basement areas of the facility, especially SCP-049's containment chamber as a blackout occurs here. Night vision goggles will also allow you to see SCP-966 instances, which are normally invisible, and will require 9V batteries to operate. You can see how full the battery is on the left side of your screen while you're wearing the night vision goggles. Using SCP-914, you can upgrade the green night vision goggles into the red or blue night vision goggles. The red ones are created by putting them through 914 on the fine setting. Now the red night vision goggles, as you will notice pretty quickly, have unlimited battery. They will also provide slight resistance to SCP-895. The blue night vision goggles are created by putting uh, the goggles through SCP-914 on very fine. Now, the blue night vision goggles will provide even greater resistance to SCP-895 and will provide great resistance to SCP-012, but those aren't its only perks. Now if we put them on, you can see, unfortunately, these will require batteries again, but it is worth a trade-off, as every 10 seconds it will ping all life forms in the area. So right now you can see it's tracking SCP-173. It does that for every life form in the game. Even you can see there's a dead human body over there and it'll track the um, MTF and ping them as humans as well. So it's a very useful and very informational version of the night vision goggles. Just be careful though, is that camera refresh that happens every 10 seconds works just like a blink. So if you're looking at SCP-173 and it refreshes, that'll be a chance for him to kill you, even if you didn't technically blink. Speaking of highly informational gadgets, let's discuss the SNAV. You'll most likely first get this from the small testing room in the light containment zone as you need to go here anyway to get the level 2 keycard and you need a level 1 keycard in order to access this area and it'll be on the desk right here the SNAV also has a chance to spawn in the archive room in the light containment zone which in this case requires a level 2 keycard to open Moving on to the entrance zone, they can also be found in the basic offices, as well as in the level 2 offices. Finally, they can be found in a variant of the server farm, over here on the shelf. 
the default version of the SNAV, the SNAV 300, will map the layout as you explore. This is useful for knowing which areas of the facility you have and haven't explored yet. This version will require 9V batteries in order to operate. And as you can see, it's mapping out the facility as I explore. If you want a more comprehensive version of the SNAV, you can upgrade it in SCP-914 on the fine setting to receive the SNAV-310, which will show the layout of the entire facility regardless of whether or not you've explored it. However, if you're going to choose this version, you might as well upgrade to the SNAV Ultimate, which is created by putting it through SCP-914 on the very fine setting. This version will not require batteries and will warn you if certain SCPs are nearby with red rings that get smaller the closer you are to the SCP. It will warn you against the four main SCPs of the game, those being SCP-173, SCP-096, SCP-106, and SCP-049. The SNAV can also track uh, SCP-895 and will start glitching out when close to it. The SNAV can help with map traversal and can be used to find important rooms such as SCP-079's containment chamber. Next, let's go over the radios. You'll most likely first find them in SCP-372's containment chamber, which requires a level 2 keycard to open and is found in the light containment zone. They also have a chance to spawn in the archive room. They can be found in SCP-035's containment chamber, which is in the heavy containment zone and requires a level 5 keycard to enter. You can see the radio is over there, right by his feet, and we'll be able to get him as soon as we get him out. When retrieving the radio from here, make sure to grab it quickly as large tentacles will spawn in this room after you enter. The radio can be found in two locations in the entrance zone as well. The first is the head office, which will require a level four key card to open. Finally, they can be found in the large office by going up the stairs into the room on the left. Radios can be powered with 9V or 18V batteries and allow you to listen on various channels. Although I'll be honest, 90% of what you hear is just useless comic relief. We still had some of that 420J. It was so awesome. I still keep a plant somewhere, man. Hey, man, what if we gave some 420J to that freaky statue thing? Why? He's like already stoned. There are two situations in which the radio is actually useful, however. First of all, on channel 5, you can hear a conversation between Dr. Harp and Security Chief Franklin sometimes, in which Dr. Harp will reveal the code to his office, and that code is 7816, and it is the same on every seed, and in here you can find a med kit. Another thing you can do with the radio is put it through 914 on the very fine setting. It won't work normally anymore, but it will play a series of beeps that will reveal the code to Dr. Maynard's office. And this is a lot more useful as this 
code is randomized on every seed and the only other way to get it is to go to the pocket dimension. Let's take a listen. Sounds like the code is 4313. And I can't type apparently. And in here, we can find the next item that we will be covering, which is the ballistic vest. The only other location the ballistic vest can be found in is the warhead silo, which will require a level five key card to enter and can be found in the heavy containment zone. Some things you'll notice immediately about the ballistic vest is that you can't, when you put it in your inventory, you automatically put it on um, and it lowers your turning speed pretty significantly. Now, its main purpose is to protect against bullet shots from the MTF when they arrive once you go into the entrance zone. And uh, the ballistic vest can be upgraded uh, through 914 on fine to create the heavy ballistic vest and there's some notable differences between the two. The ballistic vest will only protect your torso while the heavy ballistic vest will protect everything but your head. Um, and then if you get hit in the vest while wearing the ballistic vest, you won't bleed like you normally would, but you still are gonna take a little bit of damage and you're gonna be hit with a stamina drop. But with the heavy ballistic vest, you only deal with the mild damage and there's no stamina drop. But the trade-off is that the heavy ballistic vest caps your stamina at 60%. Finally, we will be discussing the hazmat suit, which can be found exclusively outside of SCP-008's chamber. Now, you will need to recontain SCP-008 in order to beat the game. The problem is, SCP-173 is usually on the other side of that glass, and he can break through it. And if he breaks through the glass while the canister is still open, and you're not wearing the hazmat suit, a flying piece of glass will hit your arm and infect you with the 008 virus. So it's important put on your hazmat suit. That's an example of him breaking through the glass. So if I wasn't wearing the hazmat suit just then, I would have died. Now, after this point, most people just get rid of the hazmat suit. It has the additional benefit of um, granting you some immunity to SCP-049. Uh, um, instead of him killing you instantly, it will take him 10 seconds. But the drawbacks are so numerous that most people think it's just not worth it. And you can't really avoid these drawbacks because just like the vest, whenever you pick it up, um, you automatically put it on. It caps your stamina at 60% and it also makes it so that you can't use items at all, including key cards. If you walk up to a key card door with the hazmat suit on, try clicking on the key card, it just won't do anything. Um, if for some reason you actually like the hazmat suit, you can combine it with SCP-148, um, similar to with the gas mask to create a heavy variant, which will provide immunity to SCP-012, SCP-895, and SCP-035's tentacle creatures. Thank you all for watching.
There's currently a poll going on in my last video covering all the SCP items on what my next video is going to be. So please stop by and comment there if you want your input to be considered. But with that out of the way, I'll see you on the next one. Bye.